My Sterling Single, Part 28, Painting the Smoke Box. If at first you don't succeed, just give it up as a bad job and start again. In the previous episode, I showed a bit of an experiment, painting the smoke box using a paintbrush. But alas, once the paint had dried, it really didn't look good. My idea of painting using a very small brush to obtain very fine brush marks didn't work out. It looked more like it had been painted with a tar brush. This is no good at all. Rubbing the paint down with some wet or dry sandpaper worked very well, but this would be difficult around the small bolts holding the chimney in place. So there was only one thing for it, remove the paint and start again. I'm using an electric toothbrush and a small tub of cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner. This combination removes the paint really well and very easily, and even better, very quickly. I'm not flooding the area in cellulose thinner, because I don't want it to splash on any of the other paintwork in close proximity to the smoke box. Sometimes I even turn off the electric motor in the toothbrush and do it manually like this. The original bright idea was to bake the paint onto the smoke box by steaming the engine, and I'm really glad I didn't do that, because whilst the paint is in this state, very soft, just the day after being applied, it is extremely easy to remove the paint using the solvent method. Even though the video clips are running at a high speed, you can still see that it's not a long job doing this, and within about half an hour the smoke box had returned to its previous state. I've switched on the electric toothbrush again, and I'm using it almost dry to get into the corners of these parts on the smoke box sides. The JB weld that I used to fill the bolt heads on the smoke box was unaffected, but I still gave the smoke box another light rub down with some wet or dry sandpaper. I'm going to speed up the video very shortly because watching me applying masking tape is not good fun. Currently I'm masking the area which is painted brown at the front on the frames. This is a fiddly job. In this clip I'm masking the handrail as well. For the larger areas that need masking I thought that duct tape would be a good substitute for masking tape. Duct tape or gaffer tape is very good stuff. It's flexible, very sticky and very clingy. Now what does that remind me of? Oh yes, my time on the road in my earlier life as a musician, sticking the mains and the audio cabling down onto the stage to stop people tripping up. And I'm not going to add a girlfriend joke in this instance. This part of the job was quite tricky, getting the duct tape to go underneath the boiler. I soon figured out though that if I stuck the piece of duct tape to a piece of mahogany, I could pull it through underneath the boiler without it actually sticking to anything. This is a remarkably quick job. Let me just add a quick disclaimer. I am not good at painting. I'm not a professional painter. I've never wanted to be a professional painter. But I'm fairly resourceful and my jobs usually work out okay. After covering the pipework at the other side, I turned the engine round. So now I'm doing this side. And once again I ran the video at high speed just to get the job over with. I'm not forgetting the pieces of pipe for the injector. I don't want them to be painted with any other colour, because the paint in this area will be Great Northern Railways green, not plain old black like the smoke box. Once I masked everything off, I gave the boiler wrapper a good scouring with a piece of Scotch Brite. Now I'm getting ready to paint. You will notice I'm wearing a painting mask. And now I've opened all of the workshop doors to let some air in. I shook the rattle can for about 10 minutes and off we go, it's painting time. Several thin coats are the order of the day. It's very important not to put too much paint on in one go. I find this etch primer to be really good stuff, but I'm still following the directions on a can of etch primer from Phoenix Precision Paints, where it makes a point of stating that you need to only apply a thin coat of etch primer. Spraying etch primer can be a bit strange. It tends to come out of the can and settles on the part that you're painting in the form of lots of little dots. But thankfully these dots usually join up as the paint dries. Once again I'm only applying thin coats. I'm applying more than one coat but I'm giving the first coat time to dry. I'll probably flatten off this paint with some very very fine wet to dry sandpaper but that won't be for a while. I'm going to leave this paint to dry for about a week so it cures thoroughly. Here's the third light coat coming up. Frequently during this painting process I shake the can. This is just force of habit, I don't think it does any good, but in my mind it just keeps the paint mixed evenly inside the can. I'm steadily working my way over every part of the cladding and the smoke box. 
the paint's starting to look a little bit wet, so I'm going to let it dry and move on to the smoke box door. Here it is after the first coat. As before, I masked up the hinges. Here's the paint I'm using. I get it from a company called Auto Paint Northern. Their address and contact details are on the tin. Time now for a second coat on the smoke box door. These etch primers do seem to spray oddly, as you can clearly see here. But it should be okay once it's dry. Back to the main job, time for another coat. This is the final coat of etch primer. I've got quite a nice even covering on the boiler wrapper and the smoke box. And by applying several light coats rather than one heavy coat, I don't have any runs or sacks. This is possibly not one of the most interesting videos I've ever made, but I'm sure it will prove to be helpful to anyone who's never done any spray painting before. I can do nothing more now until the paint's dried. So stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.